So first reading, uh, currency exchange rates, determination and forecasting. This reading kind of uh, starts where we left off at CFA level one. So first 20 minutes, we would work on the basics. We will build background on the currency calculations and then we will start with the core reading. So first point, how do you interpret a currency quote? So let us say we have a quote which says, 65 Indian rupees for a US dollar. So the currency in the numerator, that currency is referred to as price currency. And the currency in denominator, we will call this as base currency. Now to me, it really helped for my exams that I always thought of the base currency as some commodity. Maybe think of that as an apple. So the whole idea is if you start thinking of the base currency as commodity, then the fact that this currency is called price currency starts making sense. For example, I can write a sentence based on this, that one apple is priced at one apple is priced at rupees 65. Now after this, if that quote becomes, let us say, rupees 69 Indian rupees 69 for a US dollar what we would say is that one apple now is priced at tell me has the apple become uh, cheaper or expensive so apple has become expensive okay so since apple has become expensive we will say that US dollar has appreciated and if you know US dollar has appreciated we will know Indian rupees have depreciated okay, so start thinking of the base currency as a commodity and that will help you crystallize your thinking are we all right here then next appreciation and depreciation of a currency so let us say we have a currency code like this 1.1735 usd for a british pound and later on this number becomes i'm going to exaggerate the number intentionally let us say 1.2532 for a british pound now what is the commodity here in this commodity is british pound and has the price of pound increased yes so can we say that pound has appreciated so typically how do we calculate appreciation so we find out the delta which is the increase in the value which would be 1.2532 minus 1.1735 divided by what was the base value which was 1.1735 so tell me how much is that appreciation 6.795 now please focus here I'm making a comment, please correct me if I go wrong. Percentage appreciation in British pound should be same as percentage depreciation in US dollar. Is that correct? No. So these two numbers are different and that happens primarily because of the base effect. So when you want to calculate appreciation or depreciation the trick is to appreciate you can do it always you can do it only for the commodity and right? in this case commodity is British pound if you want to do it for US dollar then you should be converting the quote in such a way that US dollar becomes the denominator which means if you want to make use of the same formula then percentage depreciation or percentage delta of uh, USD would be calculated as by taking invert of each of those quotes. So it would be calculated as 1 divided by 1.2532 minus 1 divided by 1.1735 divided by 1 divided by 1.1735. Right. So what you did is you inverted each of the quotes. So when you invert the quote, US dollar comes into denominator and then you make use of the same formula. 
closing minus opening divided by opening however a much more faster way of doing this question is you just make an adjustment to the base so you can say 1.2532 minus 1.1735 divided by 1.1735 32 just by changing the base you should be able to find out the revised and understanding that depreciation will always be a negative sign so that's why you don't change the numerator that's something that you understand by yourself and then it will get you a value of 6.36 but of course we know that it should be a negative value are you already here next concept is cross currency codes so let us say you wish to travel to a exotic location let us say okay, let's say so within my limited budget for me exotic is maybe cambodia so let's say we decide to travel to cambodia now there would not be a direct code available between uh, indian rupee and Cambodian, uh, what? What Cambodian? What? I think they have some KHR. So let's say there would not be a direct code between rupee and the Cambodian currency. But what we can always do is we can convert Indian rupees into US dollar, and then we can convert US dollar into KH. Let's cross check that. Yeah, real Cambodian real. So let's write down the rates. Write down one USD is four zero five zero KHR. One USD is four zero five zero KHR, Cambodian real. If that's the correct pronunciation. And uh, one USD is sixty six point four two four zero. INR. So going back to the example, so what we have now, we have a quote which is INR for USD, which was sixty six point four one four two four zero, and we have KHR right, KHR for USD which is four zero five zero. now what we wish is a direct rate between inr and khr and let's say we want our answer to be in the form of khr in the numerator <coughs> and inr in the denominator so what you need here is basic algebra you would want inr to be in the denominator that means this code should be converted or inverted and this code remains as it is so your answer would be 4050 Into one divided by sixty six point four two four zero, and then whatever the number you get, that is a cross currency code. Okay. <clears throat> so last night uh, I read about few techies uh, on Quora. So those people were working on some sort of a technology project. They are building some software or some company. I mean, I didn't understand what technology they were referring to, uh, but what I understood well is that they had a limited budget to spend, and they were looking at horizon of about one and a half to two years. So they were trying to bootstrap and find out that location in the world where, you know, they will have a reasonable uh, economic, I mean, reasonable environment, plus the cost would be really less, and then they chose uh, Cambodia for the project. so those uh, us citizens now they have they staying in cambodia and trying to build their software okay, so i got interested to check out ki kya kar raha hai so maybe shift ho jata hu okay. so anyways next one is uh, bid ask code so the way i remember this bid is uh, bank will buy so that b will help you remember this bank will buy and ask would be bank will sell 
now a lot of people remember that bid is buy but then uh, while solving questions they get confused who is buying it whether i am buying or bank is buying so remember that it is the rate at which bank will buy from you and please correct me if i go wrong can i say that an ask will always be higher than bid because a bank will always buy cheaper and it will always sell expensive so now if you see a quote like this okay now this point gets a little interesting let us say 1.01065 colon 90 Australian dollars for US dollars. So how do you how do you read this number? You would read this as one point one zero six five is the bid rate, and one point one zero nine zero is the ask rate. Now we know that this is the rate at which bank will buy. so let's say you were smart enough to remember that who will buy bank will buy but now the next question is what will they buy will they buy australian dollar or will they buy us dollar so again it really helps to think that denominator as a commodity so essentially all of these are prices for the apple in our analogy we are referring to buying and selling of us dollar being priced in australian dollars abhi okay now let us say you have 10 million us dollar you wish to convert them to australian dollar okay so always think from the apple perspective that are you selling apples or are you buying apples if you want to convert 10 million us dollar to australian dollars are you selling apples or buying apples you are selling apples that means bank is buying apples so the appropriate rate to use is bid rate if you wish to convert 10 million 10 million australian dollars to us dollar again think from the us dollar perspective because that's the base currency so now you are buying apples and since you are buying that base currency that means bank is selling the base currency and that means appropriate rate to use is ask rate are we doing okay here next concept is the pip conventions for forward quotes so one pip pip is what yeah the fourth decimal or point in percentage so one pip would be 1 divided by 10000 or the fourth decimal value so you might be quoted rates like this so let's say scenario 1 we have a exchange rate of 25.1067 and you been quoted a forward rate a forward rate of let us say 27 so this forward rate is 27 pips from the quoted spot rate which means your correct rate would be 1067 plus 27 divided by 10000 this is your forward rate okay this is one way of conveying what should be the forward rate are we doing here now an alternate way which is quite interesting please observe carefully 25.1067 and uh, let us say this is 97 and you would be provi provided a forward quote like this let us say, let us say 73 and 53 so what we have is the forward points forward pips now the question is that is that a premium on to the forward contract or is that a discount to the forward contract that's not mentioned so if the ask points are lesser than the bid points then we will interpret that as a forward 
discount because in no case you want to end up in a scenario where your bid price is turning out to be more than the ask price so if you add up these points there is a possibility that bid might turn out to be larger than ask which we cannot allow to happen but if the rates are quoted as 53 and 73 then we automatically understand that this is a forward premium <clears throat> is it clear no so when the forward uh, bid points are higher than the ask points it is a discount when the forward ask points are lesser than the forward bid points are lesser than the ask price then it is a premium why because so imagine if you decide to add if you decide to add is there a possibility that bid might turn out to be larger than ask and we cannot allow that to happen so when the bid points are higher than the ask price remove them from the bid remove them from the ask but when the bid points are less than the ask price then add up to bid and ask prices are we doing okay here if they have quoted negative then they always mean discount like so it could also be quoted like this so if it's discount reduce that from the spot rate using the pip convention the points divided by 10000 okay now this is where it gets a little interesting cross currency using bid ask quotes so so how how does it work let us say we have uh, rupees for dollar bid rates 65.1020 65.2030 and we have uh, dollars for euro rates so One point two one two five, one point three one three five. Now we've been asked a bid ask quote for. I'm intentionally going to just play around with this. Pounds, sorry, euros in the numerator and rupees in the denominator. This is what we've been asked to calculate. So there are two rules within which you need to operate. first rule is when a bid gets multiplied with bid you get the bid and when the ask is multiplied with ask you get the ask so when you want to get the new bid you should multiply bid rates with each other and new ask you should multiply ask rate with each other that's one second when you invert the quotes when you invert the quotes so an ask inverted becomes a new bid and bid inverted becomes a new ask inverted bid will be new ask inverted ask will be new bid so you have to always play around with these two rules and the question should be easy to handle so once you are okay with these two rules then we have to do a basic algebra now listen to this carefully have you written this and invert of ask is a new bid and invert of bid is the new ask so now we have to do some basic algebra here we want euros in the numerator are they in the numerator no so we know we know that we have to invert the quote so this quote has to be inverted is rupees in the denominator no so we need to invert this quote as well okay so when you need to invert both of them smarter way is to multiply them and them invert so multiply this with this this with this and then take an inverted value but this multiplication inverted will come in here and this multiplication inverted will come in here and then that would be your revised answer is it clear so whatever that number is we don't focus on the numbers but the concept is that 
when you invert a bit the revise rate is actually ask rate it is not the bit rate anymore because you are changing your commodity and then the last one is triangular arbitrage so i have an example here these are the three currency codes are they visible so see if you can start with uh, 1 million usd and see if you can come up with either profit or loss so how do we do this you do this using trial and error mechanism there are two ways of handling this you start with usd then you have let's say australian dollars and then you have mexican pesos and you come back to usd or you start with usd and then you will have mexican pesos and then you come with australian dollars one of these two will get you profit which means the other one will have you losses now we start with 1 million here i want you to have all the decimals on your screen it's easier to observe that way so have 1 million on the screen now there are two rules uh, someone recently told me about this rule which is there in the schweizer notes which says that uh, when you want to go up the quote okay so the quote is given like this australian dollars here and us dollars here so when you want to convert yourself from us dollar to australian dollar so when you want to go up the quote multiply with bid multiply with bid and when you want to come down the quote that time you can divide by ask which i think is a substantially easier rule than what we developed some time back we had done a rule right so this is a much more easy rule now we have usd 1 million from usd we are shifting to australian dollar so are we going up the bid or down the bid i mean are we going up the quote or down the quote down the quote so we will divide with the ask rate here so divide the number on your screen with 0.6015 point 6015 how much is this number 1.1662510 so these are the number of australian dollars we have now next thing that we wish to do is this australian dollar we would like to convert in this australian dollar we will want to convert in mexican peso so the code which is given is mexican peso for australian dollar and now we are trying to convert australian dollar to mexican peso so therefore the conclusion is multiply with bid so this number on your screen multiplied with 6.30 <coughs> number on the screen multiplied by 6.30 how much would that be One zero four seven three eight one five. So these are the number of Mexican pesos you will have, and then in the last leg, you are converting Mexican. So this is the rate given USD and Mexican pesos, and now you are converting Mexican pesos to US dollar. So you are going up the quote, and therefore we should multiply with bid. so this number multiplied with 0.0933 and we are ending up with less number of us dollars that means we are making a loss here so because we are making a loss this is not the feasible strategy which means we again start with the strategy number 2 here is it okay so now let's do the second one quickly on your calculator so 1 million just have one this time around and since we are shifting we are converting to mexican pesos what should we do now divide by ask 
सो वन डिवाइडेड बाय जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन थ्री फाइव एंड नाउ मेक्सिकन पेसोस टू ऑस्ट्रेलियन डॉलर वॉट शुड वी डू अगेन यू आर गोइंग डाउन द कोट सो डिवाइड बाय सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री जीरो टू फाइव डिवाइड बाय सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री जीरो टू फाइव एंड ऑस्ट्रेलियन डॉलर टू यू एस डॉलर वॉट शुड वी डू नाउ मल्टीप्लाई विथ बिड सो मल्टीप्लाई विथ पॉइंट सिक्स and then you would get 1.018 something so remove one and that 0.018 is your arbitrage profit so i think it's a very easy rule that simplifies calculation on the exam if you are going from the if you are moving so if the code given to you is like this usd and australian dollar and if you are trying to convert australian dollar to us dollar so you are going up the code multiply with bid if you are trying to convert us dollar to australian dollar you are going down the code and simply divide by ask is that okay okay <coughs> so first learning outcome so here the discussion is is on bid ask spreads spread is the difference between the ask and the bid and then they have discussed in what scenarios the spread should be lower and what scenarios the spreads would be higher so if you are buyer of the currency will you benefit when the spreads are lower or higher spreads are lower because essentially low spread means lower transaction cost so what variables determine the spreads so number one what are the spreads in the inter interbank market right so there are two markets one is dealer to the customer and second dealer to the dealer so a dealer to the dealer will of course have a lesser spread but a dealer to the customer will have a higher spread so what is the spread in the dealer to dealer market will determine what would be the spread in dealer to customer market make sense second transaction size now larger transactions will typically have larger spreads <coughs> now to some people this is counter intuitive because uh, if you are buying currency in a large large contract if you are buying currency in a large Uh, quantity then you will expect dealer to provide you some smaller spreads or discounts on spreads but it works the other way around because if your transaction size is substantially larger then you are demanding liquidity from the market and then the spreads will go up it's similar to uh, you know so imagine uh, if there is a equity if there is a stock and which has got a very less volume and if you try to buy a very large volume then that will have a impact cost it works precisely in the same way larger the transaction size wider would be the spread smaller the transaction size lesser would be the spread but when we say larger and smaller that is with respect to the relative volume of that particular currency are we okay then what type of relationship you have with the dealer right so all of you uh, have paid your fees to the cf institute and pay kiya hai na so while paying the fees uh, many of us use any swift transfers so you go to a bank and you tell them you ask them what amount of checks should i write you in indian rupees so that they will deposit that money into jp morgan account so depending on you know how is your relationship with the bank there would be difference in the spreads which are charged to you okay so at least when you pay fees for next time hopefully which is level 3 uh, go to a bank where you have a good relationship you already have a account and then you can expect better pricing from the in fact you can negotiate with the bank on the spreads as well so dealer client relationship will determine what should be the spreads now interbank spreads are function of number one currencies involved so higher volume lower spreads so if you are if you are buying us dollar in india 
or any if if you're trading on popular pairs usd euro usd pound euro pound popular pairs spreads would be lesser but let's say you want to uh, have a pair some similar to let's say cambodian what was that real cambodian real and uh, mongolian two groups then of course you would expect spreads to be substantially larger then what what time of the day so in the curriculum they have given uh, one table where they said what is the time of the day when all the markets all the three big markets are open the asian markets london market and us market so that is the time of the day when the spreads are lowest and other times of the day spreads could be relatively larger because that time the markets have highest volume now i don't think you have to remember those times it would be really stupid of them to ask you a question ki kaun se time mein sab markets khule rehte hain if at all they ask you use some basic uh, geography or basic common sense that we've learned and try to estimate what would be the time at which all the markets would be open and that would be the time at which spreads would be lowest then volatility higher volatility automatically will result into higher spreads larger deal size will automatically result into larger spreads abhi okay high volume low spreads no we said uh, higher transaction size vis-a-vis volume higher spread but higher volume lower spreads so let us say that uh, there's something wrong with my computer today so let us say that on an average uh, transaction volumes are 1 million this is volume as against second currency where as against second currency where volume is let us say 5000 so this volume is not what you are transacting this is the normal trading volume on that particular currency pair so this volume will have lower spread and this volume will have higher spread but let us say your transaction size so even in this market you wish to have a transaction of let us say and i'm just making up 800000 this is your transaction size so since you are kind of sucking that liquidity you are expecting markets to provide you liquidity or the dealers to provide you liquidity even in this market the spreads will go higher so we will have higher spreads but when we say higher spreads we are actually comparing those higher to these lower i mean relatively higher so compared to whatever was the volume compared to whatever were the spreads earlier your transaction size will demand relatively larger spread so this is relative comparison make sense should we go ahead and make sure you understand i mean these points look really easy but they have examples uh, in the curriculum for each of those points okay, so make sure you understand uh, these areas well you didn't understand this okay so let's use an analogy of stocks let's say there are two stocks stock a which is a large cap stock a which is a large cap liquid stock and stock b which is a small cap illiquid stock now the average volume on this stock on any particular day is let us say 10 million an average volume here on a particular day is 50000 now if assuming that this is a code driven market code driven market we can say that this spread would be lower and this spread by default would be this spread would be higher now in these markets let's say you have a transaction size 
so if your transaction size is uh, 1000 quantity then spread would automatically be lower but if your transaction size is uh, 5 million quantity then spread would be higher but here the comparison is happening with this spread in the same fashion here if your transaction size is 100 spread would still be lower and if your transaction size is 40000 the spread would be higher but now we are comparing with these spreads <coughs> spread 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 so whether he said uh, it will depend on whether we are buying or selling so essentially here the discussion is about spread when you get into the market so what is the difference between bid and ask if your transaction size is high dealer might not have it in his own inventory <coughs> code driven mein inventory hota hai na dealer ke paas so dealer might not have such a large inventory with himself so he'll have to manage that from somewhere else and imagine even when dealer is buying <coughs> even when the dealer is buying he will have to buy at ask prices of the other dealers correct and therefore automatically the price at which he will give you those prices will shoot up so i mean i, I don't know why you're struggling with this but this is you know, simple intuition i mean this absolutely nothing difficult to understand here the stocks which have the currency which has larger volume will automatically have lower spread we say larger volume is less transaction cost lower volume will have higher spread and then your transaction size with with the volume will also have an impact larger sizes will have higher spread smaller sizes will have lower spreads let's save the time let's move on is it related to liquidity yes large higher volumes is higher liquidity lesser volumes is lesser liquidity बाद में पूछोगे सब ओके देन दिस वन सेंटेंस माइट बी टेस्टेबल यू शुड हैव दिस इन योर नोट्स इट सेज फॉरवर्ड स्प्रेड्स इंक्रीज विथ मेच्योरिटीज फॉरवर्ड स्प्रेड्स इंक्रीज विथ मेच्योरिटीज इज एट अ प्रीमियम और डिस्काउंट इट्स अ डिस्काउंट एंड डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू हियर यू आंसर वुड बी Sorry, the answer would be B. How many pips would that be? How many pips? Hundred pips. The fourth decimal is one pip. So these are hundred pips here. So first step here is find out which currency you want a numerator. so this is already there <coughs> the currency you want in denominator which is already there so you just multiply bid with bid and ask with ask so this number multiplied with this number will provide you kya answer hai this value and this value multiplied with this value will provide you this value are we okay then distinguish between spot rates and forward rates and calculate forward premium now let's do an example let us say we have spot rate of sixty five uh, argentinian pesos i don't know the rate i'm just making up For a dollar, and we have a forward rate of sixty-two and a half Argentinian pesos for a dollar, and find out forward premium or discount on Argentinian pesos. So now see there again the commodity here is what. Yes, sir. But they have asked you premium on Argentinian pesos, so you cannot do the calculation based on the given quote. Are you following this? So what we do here, we find out. So first, would you agree that dollar has a discount, 
and Argentinian pesos have a premium. Correct. Now what we do here is find out what is the differential. Differential is three, but because we have to invert the quotes and then do the calculations, that means we shift the base and we keep the base as sixty-two, and that would be the premium, which is how much? Four point eight four. If the question was to ask you what would be the discount here, then the calculation would have been three divided by. Are we all together here? So again, the trick is appreciation, depreciation, premium, discount can be done only for the apple, which is the denominator. If they have asked you for the price, make that price currency as the denominator and then do the calculation, which amounts to just shifting the basis. I'll just do one of these for you. Let's do ninety days. Now, first rule that we check is that is the bid lesser than ask. Yes, then we are simply going to add up the numbers. So one point zero five double one plus fifteen point six one divided by ten thousand and one point zero five one nine divided by sorry plus. Sixteen point eight divided by thousand. These are your forward codes. So logic is same. The profit or loss is calculated per apple in the price currency. As long as you keep that thing in mind, it should be easier. Also, because you might be required to discount the profits. Okay, so we'll we'll do an example. Let us say spot trade. Now this part is coming from derivatives, therefore it should be relatively easier for you. Spot trade today is rupees sixty five for a dollar. Interest rate in US five percent. Interest rate in India is ten percent. Question number one: Find out no arbitrage forward or future price for one year. Question number two: After three months, spot rate is rupees sixty-five. Sorry, rupees sixty for a dollar. Find out profit, and again observe now. I'm going to play around a little bit here. Find out profit for profit or loss for someone who had short position on contract. Now I'm not specifying short position on which currency. Someone had a short position on contract. So again, the commodity in the contract is what dollars. So short position or long position is always for the commodity, which is dollar. Right? And of course, your answer will change dramatically depending on how do you interpret that short position. So here, short position is we wish to sell dollars in future at a predetermined price, and then find out profit or loss. This would be similar to mark to market. So how does it work? Step number one: You find out no arbitrage forward price. So this is time zero. This is time one. Use interest rate parity. So this price will come out to be sixty-five into one point one divided by one point zero five. So your new parity price, I mean the first forward price will come out to be how much? Sixty-eight point zero nine. Now you are here, which is time. What is the time right now? Three months. So which is point two five. Now using the same formula, you will find out a new forward price. So this would be sixty into one point one divided by one point zero five. 
हाउ मच सिक्सटी टू पॉइंट वन थ्री नाउ यू हैव अ शॉर्ट पोजिशन सो यू हैव अ राइट टू सेल वन डॉलर एट वॉट प्राइज आर यू गोइंग टू सेल सिक्सटी एट वॉट इज द रेट इन द मार्केट सिक्सटी टू आर यू सेलिंग एक्सपेंसिव और चीपर यू सेलिंग एक्सपेंसिव सो द डिफरेंस ऑफ दीज टू इज योर प्रॉफिट सो दिस इज वेयर थिंकिंग दैट डिनोमीटर लाइक एन एप्पल रियली मेक सेंस बिकॉज यू हैव अ राइट टू सेल वन एप्पल एट अ प्राइज ऑफ सिक्सटी एट वेर एज इन द मार्केट यू कैन बाई दैट एप्पल एट अ प्राइज ऑफ सिक्सटी टू एंड दैट्स वाई योर प्रॉफिट कम्स इन द प्राइज करेंसी सो पर एप्पल यू हैव अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ अबाउट सिक्स रुपीज हियर सो द डिफरेंस ऑफ दीज टू सो लेट मी जस्ट क्लियर थिंग्स ऑफ अल बिट हियर so difference of these two is your profit so that profit would come out to be here 5.96 is that your profit uh, today no so since you wish to do the settlement now you will want to discount that for point 75 but when you discount now your profit is in which currency rupees you discount at what rate you will discount at indian rupee which is 10% and then that present value would be your answer with currency is what compounding convention you follow so is nothing is mentioned on the exam use annual compounding with 365 days so if they will give you a 180 day contract then your compounding would be 180 divided by 365 yeah but if the rates are <coughs> quoted like this now in this example 30 day 60 day rate then these are libor rates and then in this case you will not use compounding in this case you will do just adjust the rate for the time period okay so we have an interesting question here so we have all the data this is the first part of the question this is second and this is these are the type of questions you are going to see on exams you just need i mean you hardly need any information on this side as well as this slide but they will provide too much of excess data there would be too many tables and too many other information which would not really be put to use so they just want to check whether you understand uh, what is relevant and what is not relevant and then you have to find out m to m do you want to see the next slide dot ek baar i did not say ki pura ke pura slide ka zarurat nahi hai there is one number on this slide that you have to use what is answer c is the answer So how do you do this? So you are going to buy two million commodity at a price of USD one point four six one two sixty days from now because you are at time thirty. Now to find out profit. 60 days from now you would want to sell the commodity now here the commodity is in the denominator so the bank will buy from you at the cheaper rate so the difference of these two multiplied with 2 million is roughly the profit that you are making in the price currency which is us dollar and then this us dollar profit you will want to discount backwards for 60 days at the rate of 0.21% which would almost be negligible because that 0.21 you will have to adjust for 60 day time period so that would be divided by 6 again and therefore your answer here would be option c are we okay